Turkey's capital on a 10th night of nationwide anti-government demonstrations. What started as a local environmental campaign last month has soon escalated into violent clashes, but even tear gas and water cannon have failed to dampen the activist mood. RT's Irina Galushko with the details now. This is still going on. People are saying they're not backing down. They're going to continue to protest. And it's not all fun and games. Protesters have come under fire from police in Ankara. This is the second day in a row that such, uh, such an event has happened. In fact, Ankara is one of those, is one of the Turkish cities which has been under a lot of pressure when it comes to police uh, reacting to the protest. In fact, it has been gassed or somehow the water cannons have been used on protesters almost every single day of the protest, which have been going for more than a week at this point, almost two weeks in Istanbul. The worrying trend here is that uh, Prime Minister Erdogan continues to talk about his supporters who are also getting ready to go to the streets. According to Erdogan, he's, uh, uh, the, their patience is running thin and uh, those who are siding with the Prime Minister are ready to take to the streets and express their points of view. If that, of course, happens, then a lot of analysts or experts are predicting a, uh, uh, an extreme civil unrest in the country and a lot all of them, of course, are hoping that that will not be the case. As it stands at this point, people in Istanbul uh, show absolutely no determination to go anywhere. They have been camping out here in Taksim and in Gazi Park for more than a week at this point. Uh, their main demand is also to see the Prime Minister leave his post. But the Prime Minister obviously has made it clear that he is not going anywhere. 13 activists have been arrested in Turkey for what authorities describe as social network posts that incited hatred and invited people to stage provocations. To talk more on the latest uh, event, we are now joined live from Ankara by Jeremy Salt from Bilkent University in Ankara. Uh, Mr. Salt, uh, Turkey's prime minister called Facebook and Twitter evil. Is this the beginning of a clampdown on the internet? I don't think so, but a number of people have been arrested in Istanbul and 13 people were arrested in Adna and were actually charged. And he's made very negative comments about social Twitter. He's blamed a lot of um, organizations, individuals and uh, situations for this crisis. And they include the social media. He's had very harsh things to say about it. Uh, so so it, you're saying that it's not, they're not clamping down on the internet and now the opposition is also taking advantage of the situation, even going as far as calling uh, uh, for prompt election. Is that reasonable? I mean, is that, uh, is that according to the law? Can they do that? They can, early elections won't happen. And when I talked about social media, I didn't mean to say that uh, they're not cracking down on the social media because they are. But I don't think this is going to uh, end in a large scale kind of crackdown on the social media. The central problem now is that uh, there are very serious differences within the government of what's going on between the Prime Minister, between the President and between the Deputy Prime Minister, Bulent Arrich. But Mr Erdogan has not changed his position in the, at all, apart from saying that the new building he wants to put up, the new old building he wants to put up in Taksim Square, won't have a shopping mall. Otherwise, he hasn't backed off one little bit, and he's used very kind of aggressive language against the demonstrators. He's called them terrorists, vandals, wreckers, marauders, looters, so forth and so on, and has then said that uh, they dare to insult him as the prime minister. Um, so there's obviously a lot going on behind the scenes here but within the ruling party. And the stock market opened this morning an hour late for technical reasons and immediately dropped nearly 3% in value. So there's a lot of pressure from the business lobby as well, as well as within the AK party on Mr Erdogan to change position. So far, he hasn't done that. Uh, this protest, uh, could these protests form into a real force for the opposition and lead to a kind of dialogue? Uh, well, the op when you talk about the opposition, I suppose you're talking about the people in the in the streets. You're not talking about the opposition the parties. Activists. Yes, well, the opposition party, the main opposition party itself, is very, very careful not to kind of tie itself in too closely to these demonstrations. But like all mass demonstrations, as we saw in Tahrir Square, there's no kind of central body. People gather in the streets, and that's the whole nature of the, of the protest. They're spontaneous. They're grassroots. They're not people who want to join a political party or a political movement. Uh, they represent a broad range of interests. They've all come together at Gezi Park um, in Taksim, and that, of course, has had this spill-on effect across the country. Uh, Mr. Saul, these protests have drifted away now from what they initially were. Uh, they, it was an environmental protest. Now, why do you think the situation has escalated to where it is right now? I think because of the last, uh, really for a decade, the Turkish government has taken the country on a very, very different path. And this has finally found a vent. 
in the Gezi Park protest, which, as you've just noted, was about um, uh, environmental reasons, chopping down of trees. But then the, beneath that is the, the second issue, which is what they want to do at Taksim Square. And the, the symbols are very important here because Taksim was developed in the 1920s as a symbol of the modern, secular um, Turkish Republic. Now, Mr. Erdogan wants to turn it into a symbol of something else. He wants to put up his old Ottoman military barracks. He wants to put a mosque there. It will totally change the face of Taksim Square, but it will represent what he wants Turkey to become, which is a much more religious society. Right. Um, thank you very much, Jeremy Salt, the Associate Professor of, uh, at Bilkent University in Ankara, giving us a...